So to wrap up this sequence of examples, we're kind of gonna we're kind of going to do the opposite. In the last two examples, signal construction one and signal construction number two, we were given a figure and we were asked to come up with an equation. In signal plotting, we will be given a an equation and we are going to plot the signal. So it's kind of flip things around a little bit. So here is the signal x of t that we're going to work with. It's 3u of t plus r of t minus r of t minus 1 minus 5 of u of t minus 2. So there's an equation that we're provided. And what we're going to do is plot the signal. So typically, what I think is the best way to do things like this is to examine each component of the signal and plot each component. Once you've plotted each component, you can pick a point in time and to sum up each component graphically to figure out what the signal is. So first, let's just sketch our time axes and our amplitude axes. And then one by one, let's plot what 3u of t is. Let's plot r of t. Let's plot minus r of t minus 1. Let's plot each component of the signal individually. And then we will graphically add them up to yield a plot for the signal x of t. So that first term, 3u of t, if we had to plot that, it would look like this. 3u of t is 0 for all negative time. At time 0, it turns on, and it turns on to a value of 3. So this is what 3u of t looks like. The next term in our expression for x of t is r of t, and we know what that looks like. That is a ramp signal that starts at time 0 and has a slope of 1 for all time. So r of t ramps up and just continues as a line for all time with slope 1. Minus r of t minus 1, that's also a ramp. It doesn't turn on until time 1, and it has a slope of negative 1. So if we were going to plot this component, it would look like this. It turns on at time 1, and it has a negative slope, so it goes downwards to the right. The last component of this signal is minus 5 u of t minus 2. That turns on at time 2 and it has a value of minus 5, and that value gets held for all time. So at 0, then at time 2, it jumps down to minus 5, and then it holds this value for all time. So these are the four different pieces that comprise the signal x of t. I want to plot x of t. So the way I like to do this is I like to just pick a point and then sum up all the curves that I see. So for example, at time 0, if I look at all the curves there, all of them are 0 except for 3 u of t. So at time 0, if I add up all these signals, the only thing that contributes is 3 u of t, so I'm going to get a 3 for x of t. So that value is going to hold right there. As I go off of t equals 0, some terms turn on. The green line turns on, so I'm going to start ramping up and that's going to continue until I get to time 1. That's the next thing that happens in this problem. At time 1, this purple line is activated, and it's going to cancel out the upslope of the green line. So at time 1, I'm going to go back to having a slope of 0. So that's why things flatten out between times 1 and 2. So I'm just going to hold that value. In this problem, the next thing that happens occurs at time t equal to 2. At time t equal to 2, I'm going to jump down 5 units. So from this value right here, I'm going to jump down 5 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to end up at minus 1. And then that value is going to get held for all time. Again, another way to think about it is pick a time t, maybe this time right here at 3.5, and add up all the curves. At this time t, the um, blue curve and the red curve give you minus 4, right? But the green curve and the purple curve give you a value of minus 3, so that ends up giving you a value of minus 1. So kind of starting from the left, working your way to the right, you can kind of see what turns on at what time and add in the appropriate amount, and it's basically just the opposite of what we did in the previous problems. So when we're all, all done, we have this gray curve, which slopes up, holds its value, steps down, and this x of t is the plot that we were wanting to get.